Hello, I'm Steve Forbes. In these challenging economic times, there's a unique opportunity for innovation, ideas, and execution. That's what entrepreneurs do, and that's what we seek, encourage, and celebrate at Forbes. On our quest to find America's most promising companies, we're launching a new video series featuring world-famous entrepreneurs mentoring up-and-coming entrepreneurs on location. So here you are, Dr. Perricone, books, Oprah, PR, major product line, in essence a global brands. I mean, is there one secret to success? I think the reason I had the success is utilizing the information that I had, but a real passion to create a way of informing people on how they can take care of themselves, and then utilizing the technology that I created. And that was always the goal. How can I get this message out? And then with that goal in mind, all the rest of the success came along with it. And so that's it. If you have real passion for what you're doing, the success is going to come with that. Right. If you're looking, at, if your focus is success in its own right, I just don't see how that's going to happen. Right, right, right. Consumer demands. Today, they like your diet or your skincare treatment. Tomorrow, they like the next doctors. So in essence, what do you do or what can I do to sort of reinvent myself? So what you can do is you can't write a new book every day. You can't come up with a new product. But if your basic message and your basic science is sound and valid, you just keep on getting the word out there in a different way. And so social networking now is the key. And certainly Paracone is doing that now. You know, Twitters and blogs and, and all of the other means we have. We have a powerful dot com where we do a, you know, a third of our revenue comes from dot com. But it's information based. We have a fairly long story to tell. Not complex, but a very long story. And you can't do that interfacing with a customer standing in front of products at right. Sephora. So how do you how do you sort of maybe disassociate yourself for something where you, went, you wanted to go out with a, with a very powerful, good cause and all of a sudden it becomes very negative and all of a sudden there's a backlash perhaps around you or your science or what you believe in and, and so how do you address that? Green tea was the thing I mentioned Oprah, right. if you eat green tea and substitute for coffee you'll drop 10 pounds, right. talked about the acai berry, talked about blueberries and now all of a sudden overnight all of these programs are seen on the internet right. and they're using my image and they're using right. Oprah's image and right. they're saying that we're, and it looks as if we're right. representing their company. And so it's very, you know, it's very depressing. You have to, of course, have a, very, a group of a, a very expensive attorneys sending letters out. You just can't stop the flow of information. And then you get kind of the backlashes. Right. Oh, you and Oprah are personally destroying the Amazon rainforest by talking about acai. You know, it's not, right. you know, it's not us. And so we have to separate ourselves. And I'm hopefully people will understand that when you're a public figure that people can grab your image and, and, and do what they've done, which is truly misrepresenting what we, were, what we were saying on that program. Who did you turn to for mentorship or guidance? Was it an individual? Was it a company that you really respected? Yeah, I think there's a couple of influences. Um, one, of, one right out of here in New York is Nikola Tesla. Most people have not heard of him, but he was a, a physicist, kind of electrician, who brought alternating current and, and lit New York and hundreds of patents and did much more for the world than Thomas Edison but he was cut off and marginalized because he just wanted to do things for people. But always these people had in mind, how could they utilize what they were doing uh, to give it to people uh, for a particular service, to help you know, the, uh, whoever was around, surrounding, but always on a more on a global level. And I think those are the, the true mentors. So what should I as a CEO be focusing on day to day, where I have a trusted team to handle a lot of the operations, but, but what, what, what's most critical for my role for, for the company? The most critical role for a CEO, as I see it, is you've got to keep yourself clear to do oversight. Let everybody else do the implementation, but you're going to have to keep them on course because it gets off course very, very quickly. Right. Right. So remember your philosophy, remember your core values, remember what your goal is, right. keep your eye on that goal at all times, and remember you've got to be clean and clear-headed enough to watch the course of this company every day. Right.